So Noah's flood probing an ancient narrative using geoscience. We also published a paper about it, which I will uh, introduce later, but this is now the topic and I can start with the first slide. Every one of you is more or less familiar with the story and many artists have uh, brought it to pictures, this dramatic pictures where all mankind drowns except for Noah and the ark is always nicely pictured and of course with uh, all the animals and this is also a nice story also for the children of course. Yeah, and this whole story, of course, is rooted in uh, what we know from the biblical record. As you can see, uh, the wickedness of men and Noah is chosen by God, and then he is saved. And then there is the announcement of the flood and the course of the flood. This is uh, all registered, and uh, this narrative we read in Genesis 6, 7, and then later also in Genesis 8. But there were also other uh, flood stories, and I think we will hear about this in the second talk. We know about a Sumerian flood, a local flood, about 3,150 before Christ or before Common Era, as you would like to put it. And we know about an Akkadian flood, Akkadian, Atrahasis epic talks about it, and this epic is from the 14th century BC. Then we have the flood of the Gilgamesh epic, which is very, very interesting, and I will come to it in a minute. It's on the 11th tablet of the Gilgamesh epic, uh, which dates from the 12th century BC. And then, of course, the biblical flood, the transcript is about 7th century BC. So the Gilgamesh epic is especially interesting because it is a very similar flood story to what we know from Noah's flood. Uh, there is also someone chosen and he is saved. Interesting, not only him and his family, but also the hand workers, those who helped him uh, build the ark, they were saved. It's a very, very similar story. And it is, for me, rather a confirmation uh, that there has been a major catastrophe and people got really impacted by that. So there are different hypotheses about it. How can we talk about this from the natural science? And as you know, I'm a geographer, so I come from geoscience. And one explanation for this big flood is the post-glacial flooding of the Persian Arabian Gulf. What do we mean by that? The last glacial maximum, which is about 20,000 years ago, has a different um, yeah, there is a different uh, distribution of the ice masses uh, on the Earth. You see the big Laurentide ice sheet here in Northern uh, America. I hope you see the pointer. And then in Northern Europe, a lot of uh, is ice all over and up to 3.5 kilometers thick ice. You know, that's really massive. And connected with it, sea level is deeper. Sea level is about 120 meters deeper than today. So more than half of the shelf areas, which the shelf goes up to minus 200 meters, half of the shelf areas are dry land. So this is dry, people can walk there. And um, as we see it, especially in the Gulf region, now look, this is, uh, you see uh, Africa, part of Africa, you see the Arabian Peninsula, and here the Gulf, the Persian Gulf is dry, it's dry land, people can walk there. And then one explanation is, so, so this is now the ice age, and for my students, I have to bring this picture also, the ice age. Oh, now they realize, ah, oh, yeah, this is with the sub-toothed uh, tiger and with the mammoth and so on. Yeah, yeah, that's the ice age. And at that time, sea level is uh, 120 meters deeper than today. And then sea level, so the, the gulf is dry, as you see. There is only a little river in it and maybe some lakes or so, okay. And then sea level rises dramatically because the ice masses are melting and it rises from minus 120 up to about uh, yeah, our present situation. So this is between 15,000 and uh, 7,000 before today. So this rapid sea level rise is flooding the Gulf and uh, yeah, there is uh, water all over and people, some people say this is the basic of Noah's flood. I don't think so. I think this is the basis of the Atlantis saga of the collective memory of humankind, because at that time, this was the time of the Paleolithic people and Mesolithic people. So of course they knew last year I could walk there and now there is the sea all over in the world where they were at that time. They saw ah, the sea is massively invading us, but this is the Atlantic, Atlantis saga. It's not Noah's flood, I think. 
So, but for some people, because I think people could run away, this, this was fast, geologically very fast, yes, but on the other hand side, you could still make your ways and run away, so to speak. But this is one hypothesis. Second hypothesis, a cosmic impact about 10,000 years ago. So this was <clears throat> introduced by Tolman and Tolman. Tolman, Professor Tolman was professor of geology at Vienna University, and he collected all information in the flood stories of the peoples of the earth. His book here in German, I don't know whether it was translated in English, but I presume because it was made a major impact and the flood did happen after all. This is a little bit in the ductus of uh, Werner Keller und die Bibel hat doch recht. Yes, the Bible is true. So in this, in this uh, dictus. And from myth to historical truth, this is what he is uh, uh, saying. And he says, yes, it was a massive comet which hitched the earth and the comet before coming to earth was split in seven parts and six parts fell in the water and we had tsunamis all over. And this is why the peoples of the earth have flood stories in their narrations. The, uh, so to speak, the analog which he had as a geologist was the boundary, geological boundary between Cretaceous and tertiary. This is 66 million years ago and indeed there was this impact at Yucatan in Mexico, you see Yucatan, there was the impact of this Chichilope uh, comet and uh, or asteroid hitting Earth. And indeed the dinosaurs died and a lot of species got extinct. 70 to 75% uh, percent of all the species got extinct. And after that life had to recover again. So this is the geological analog for him, so to speak. And we have tsunami evidence in Texas and all over in the United States, you find it here. And uh, we have uh, several evidence that this really happened 66 million years ago. So coming from this background as a geologist, he says, okay, we have other impacts, smaller ones, but we have the meteor shower, uh, 1872 and the decay of the comet Bela and many parts hit the earth not so strong as the other, of course, but there was an impact and we know of uh, the Barrington crater in Arizona. So we know of many cosmic impacts. So why not this flood uh, impact? And we know in this, what we call the last book of the Christian Bible, the book of Revelation, St. John, it says, and the stars in the sky fell to earth. This is the apocalypse, you know, the, the stars fell from the earth and the the people uh, tried to find shelter and of course a big catastrophe. The flood comet in his scenario is about 10,000 years ago, worldwide tsunamis. And since the world is rotating and the comet comes to earth and it is uh, split into seven parts and six parts fell in the sea, we have tsunami waves all over. And this is why many peoples of the earth have the flood story and indeed, our friend Dieter Kellett had collected the, the stories and you have all of these dots are peoples of the earth who have in their narration, in their history or in, her, in their um, mind, they have flood stories. And this is uh, interesting because also some people who live in the mountains know once the world was drowned in a big flood. And um, the uh, Tolman, uh, both Tolmans, he and his wife, they collected these myths and they came up that was about 10,000 years ago. As a geologist, we would say, this is the end of the ice age and the beginning of what we call the Holocene, 10,000 years ago. The problem is you cannot prove it geologically. There at this boundary, which is Pleistocene Holocene, we don't have the iridium anomaly, which we have from this uh, big catastrophe at the tertiary, uh, uh, Cretaceous tertiary boundary. We don't have it here. This is the problem about it and nobody has found the evidence uh, as a real proof. It's a nice theory, it's, uh, it has some charm, but um, it is not proven scientifically. The third hypothesis is the post-glacial flooding of the Black Sea. There was a big impact by the book by Ryan and Pittman, Noah's flood, the new scientific discoveries about the event that changed history. And it was then in National Geographic, and it was, it triggered a lot of uh, research pro projects, scientific research projects. And their theory was there is a mega flood from the Mediterranean via the Bosphorus into the Black Sea. The sea level is low in the ice age, then sea level rises, and then there is a mega 
flood into the Black Sea region and people who were around this lake at that time, they drowned. I will explain a little bit more. We have again this scenario, sea level is low, 20,000 years ago, and a lot of land bridges exist. You see here the Black Sea, and you see the, the Aegean Sea, and they were discoupled. They were discoupled. So the Black Sea had its own history at that time. And then you have the melting of the ice caps, like in the Eurasian ice cap, and a lot of these meltwater lakes goes into the Black Sea. And the Black Sea at that time is a freshwater lake, and peoples of the earth are around this freshwater lake because they need, of course, water to live. And then 8,500 years ago, sea level rises and we have the Aegean Sea, the Mediterranean coming into this basin because at that time, the Black Sea was minus 150 meters. So we have the rise of the general sea level worldwide and at 8,400, before today, we have the connection and then the waters catastrophically go into the Black Sea and the people who are around, they drown. And this is the background of Noah's flood, the big flood history. And there are some arguments from geological. Indeed, when you look at the fauna, it becomes fresh, 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 fresh. So we have a freshwater fauna and then all of a sudden, the saltwater fauna starts again with mutilus, which is definitely fully marine. So this is why they say it is catastrophic. Pittman and Ryan say it's catastrophic. They're both geologists, so it's not just fantasy. This is the, the core, the, 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 the evidence from geology. And of course, uh, the lower picture here, this is how then the, um, the, the, the painter thinks it could have been. But there are some evidence like that, and you have to explain it. Well, it was making such an impact that uh, Ballard, this is the man who found with his submersible who found the Titanic, you know, so he was searching for this shoreline minus 150 meter shoreline. Do we find people there which drown, who drowned or do what do we find? They found some wood indeed. Oh, they said this is maybe a construction or so, but later they dated the wood and it came out 200 years. So that was nothing, you know. So again, the real evidence, there is this ge geological evidence that obviously it was a sudden connection but that this is the background is another very questionable uh, explanation. The fourth one is that we had a mega flood catastrophe in Mesopotamia. So we are now going to Ur. Ur, you see the, the, the Gulf, uh, the rest of the Gulf. And here is Ur, of course, as you know, the birthplace of Abraham. And Sir Leonard Woolley in the 20s, he was excavating Ur. And he wrote this nice book, Ur of the Chaldees. And in German, it's translated Ur und die Sintflut, Ur and the Genesis flood. Because in German, this is, so to speak, more direct. It is the Genesis flood. So what did Sir Leonard Woolley excavate when he excavated Ur? This is the Ur as we would see it today with the Sikurat and so on. Ur, the birthplace of Abraham. Indeed, he found something very special, a so-called flood layer. Do you see it here? It's called in this picture to the left, B, B, there is a flood layer. And in his excavation, there is a layer below number four in this right part. And then there is in the middle, this number three, which is sterile. There's not much in it, a little bit of pottery, but not much. And it's all, all of a sudden, it must have been deposited. And then come the, the strata where we say, yeah, this, this historical strata of a tell, a settlement hill is a tell. So Ur is a tell, you know. Okay. And um, we have it also in our publication. I come to this, and this is the flood layer. This red is the flood deposit. The flood layer, it's water laid silt of fluvial origin. So we know it is from a river coming, it's deposited at one time, and it's about average thickness 3.5 meters. So that's really massive, 3.5 meters of deposit. So that means, of course, much more water is coming. I worked in Uruk. In Uruk, this is north of Ur. Uruk is the biblical Erech, the biblical Erech. And it's a little bit north, as you see. And what do we see there? Uruk Varka, it's an interesting, it's a 16 meter high tell in lower Mesopotamia. And you have early finds from late Calcolytic, so it starts the fifth millennium before Christ. It's the founded as a twin city. It's the birthplace of writing. The first cuneiform lettering comes from there, 3,200 before Christ. 
It's the invention of brewing of beer, <laughs> also not unimportant beer. And it is the legendary city of King Gilgamesh, King Gilgamesh. And the city wall, which you see here in red, the red, this is the city wall, is still preserved. It's 11 kilometers still preserved from the Gilgamesh. Interestingly, when you look in Genesis 10, which talks about uh, Ham's son is Cush and Cush fathers Nimrod, like Nimrod, and the Lord said, Nimrod, whom the Lord saw as a great hunter. You know this passage, I think. And the most important cities in his kingdom were Babel, Babylon, Erek, Uruk, this is what we are talking about, Akkad, and Kalne. So a city, he is a city builder, and that means he builds a fortified settlement. And I think the Nimrod of the Bible, this could be the Gilgamesh. That's a very interesting topic I would like to, to discuss with the rabbi, and we would have to, to go into the uh, details for that. So maybe Gilgamesh, this is the Nimrod of the Bible. Anyhow, I drilled on this uh, city wall. I wanted to see how deep is it, and it's still preserved, five meters. So the, the reddish, what you say, and this drill card to the left, this is all Gilgamesh's uh, uh, city wall. And when we look in some of the drills, we have what is this kind of a flood layer. Again, one, two, three meters, you know, similar as what we had heard just from this uh, uh, Sir Leon Advuli. Yeah, and when you collect the data, this is where we put it together. And again, you have a flood layer here. And when we put together the information, we find that there are several flood layers. We talked about the flood layer, the mega flood layer in Ur. We are now talking about Uruk. There is the same layer or similar layer in Babylon. So there are layers of uh, sediment layers of a mega flood in Mesopotamia and a little bit south of it. This is proven in many settlements and tells of Mesopotamia. So my research approach now, if we could work there, but still, you know, there's civil the war and so on, uh, this would be to study the flood layers, to look sedimentologically, nobody has done this, nobody had compared them all, you know, to look at the faunal and floral inventory, what is, what is there in this flood layer, and chronostratigraphy to date them. Is it, is it same at the same time? So, I would like to excavate the Genesis flood, <laughs> as I call it. And the question is, when was it? I come to it in a minute. So I, I put together a summary. I make my summary. We had the hypothesis about Noah's flood. First, the post-glacial flooding of the Paris and Arabian Gulf. You remember that? Then the cosmic impact 10,000 years ago. Third, post-glacial flooding of the Black Sea. And fourth, which I think it was, the mega flood catastrophe in Mesopotamia. When was it? The big question. And we had once a seminar at the University of Marburg when I st was still lecturing there with an uh, ancient historian who knows the historians, someone who knew the cuneiform lettering, with someone who was in uh, theology, you know, and myself as a geographer. So our synthesis, when we put all the stories together, we think it was a mega flood. 2,900 before Christ. This is a strong hypothesis, but this is, so to speak, our working hypothesis with which we would analyze these floods, the flood layers. I put all of that together in, in, a, in, a, in an article which has the same title as my lecture today. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>